Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Tally Spencer. I am here with Rob The Matrix, who is an independent producer. And we're going to be chopping it up today about what Rob has going on, where you're from, um, some of your musical inspirations, and just really get to know you. So first and foremost, how you doing, Rob? Doing good. What's going on? It's your boy, Rob The Matrix. Rob The Matrix. Now, where are you from, Rob? I'm from. I'm originally from Wharton, Texas. Uh, it's a small town out here in Texas. Uh, it's about fifty to sixty miles away from Houston. So yeah, okay. I'm born there. Uh, born there and raised. And so you're still based out there? No, 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 no. I'm in uh, the Missouri County area. It's like twenty minutes south of Pearland. Okay. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I actually know where that is. I was in uh, Houston for Fourth of July and okay. I saw a fireworks show in Pearland. So. Okay. I know where that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't. I always have to say Houston area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> um, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, so okay. just have been here ever since, but do a little bit of traveling myself, and always is interesting to kind of see where everyone is from. This music world is so big, but so small at the same time. Definitely, definitely it is. Right. Okay, well, let's get right into it. Um, okay. So tell me about, you know, yourself and your background. How did you first get into music and producing? Well, so for me, uh, my story is kind of long, but short at the same time. Um, I was a football player, you know, since I was five. Uh, high school, I ran into a buddy. Uh, his stage name go by the name of Bama Baby. And then uh, he introduced me to the producing room. Uh, I used to, like, you know, battle dance and stuff like that. <laughs> but he introduced it to me. He said, man, I think you'll connect with it real good because you know how to move to the beat. And I think you'll connect with making music. I'm like, okay. So then it kind of, that's how kind of how my journey started. And then from there, I just started getting good at it. and Started knowing how records are supposed to sound and arrangement. And it went from just being a beat maker to being, you know, a full-time, full-out producer, you know. Okay. Okay. I love that. That's a, um interesting start. So you started out in sports and then kind of found music. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of came to me. <laughs> That's usually how it is, you know, yeah. passions, you kind of discover them throughout life. Um, what was, you know, the defining moment for you that made you really want to pursue it and take it seriously, just given um, the history of the industry and how, how hard it is to make it, some of the, the trials and tribulations, you know, what was it for you that made you want to really commit to it? Yeah, so for me, um, you know, in football, you kind of train your mind and commit to, you know, getting better training and all that type of stuff. So when I decided I was finally going to take it serious, uh, I just kind of like, okay, well, I got to learn music theory. Uh, I went to Art Institute for a semester, <laughs> learn music theory. Then from once I got the music theory down, I started seeing the momentum and how independent artists start gravitating towards me, how music professionals started gravitating towards me, kind of gave me a boost of confidence. So I mm -hmm. uh, started working with a lot of local artists. Um, some you may know, like just Britney, Kirk O'Bangs, uh, so on. So yeah, we, we would have like little shows and stuff and they were like, okay, I'm, I'm in here. Like I'm in this thing. <laughs> right, right. One yeah. thing leads to the next, it seems like. Um, I'm curious, you know, you mentioned some some pretty dope names. How did you first start working with these artists or, um, you know, first even just start working with artists in general? How did people like find you and your music? Well, the good thing about the guy that introduced me to it, you know, uh, he was an artist himself. And, you know, he was just trying to build pieces around him, not knowing that I was going to turn out to be, you know, this. So uh, I got a lot of good, you know, practice with him. You know what I mean? And then from there, when I started working with different artists, it gave me a different perspective on how to work and interact in the music industry, different sounds, different people's, you know, thinking, creative process. So it just kind of helped me put things in perspective like, OK, so when I'm doing this, I know I need to do this. Well, mm -hmm. I, I know how this is supposed to sound. And it just started training my ear to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And then from there, you know, once everything else started falling in place, it just kind of got real serious for me. So, yeah. right, right. Okay. So things kind of just picked up and happened quickly. Yeah. Um, what would you say has been something that you've learned along your journey um, about the music industry? 
Uh, the grind never stops. <laughs> like right. I've been in this thing for ten years now. Uh, I've been producing for over, yeah a little bit over ten years now, um, and I'll say it's been a journey. Um, yeah, we've been like when we were grinding, grinding South by Southwest, all these events. Like even though I'm a producer, not an artist, you know I'm in the trenches with these people, so I'm seeing what it takes to network. I'm seeing what it takes to build um, a network. You know, a wise man once told me, "Build your network, you build your net worth." So yeah, you know, it just kind of stuck with me. And that's a good that's, word of advice to live. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> build your network, you grow your net worth. That's true because you're only as good as your circle or the people around you. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. a lot of it is based on association and um, you know talent too. At the end of the day, but networking kind of opens a lot of doors that um, otherwise you know wouldn't be possible. So the whole goal, from my experience with music as well, is just you know. Um, Meet as many people as you can and tell as yeah. many people as your goals and your dreams as possible because you never know who's going to be that person to kind of like open that door for you. Definitely. I know for me, I used to just randomly go to showcases just to meet people because I know it's a slew of artists there. So I'm thinking about it from a business perspective as well because, you know, I went to school for business. So I understand how it operates. And as long as you learn a product and you learn right. how to sell it, it's... it's universal <laughs> absolutely when it comes to artists working with you uh independent artists specifically is there a way that you like to be approached or how do you recommend artists go about um working with somebody like you uh just to be genuine don't be pushy like people in the industry don't like pushing <laughs> for some reason <laughs> and besides like uh you also want to you know respect people's time you know i got a lot of things going on uh whether i'm working with this artist that artist uh, working with my marketing company, just so much stuff that I be go got going on. You know, if you approach me and I see you genuine and you're serious about your career, then I'm more than willing to work with you, help with help help with your career in any any way I can. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, good to know. Good to know. Um, what has been some of the highlights of the last ten years of your career? I know that's kind of a long time to span, <laughs> but if you could name, you know, a couple things that um you would highlight as like peak moments or just moments that really made a difference for you? Um, okay. <laughs> Definitely working with uh, just Britney people, uh, which got me linked in with Kirko people. Uh, we actually, you know, arranged a concert for uh, Kirko out here. You know, uh, we was spearheading it with our artists and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um once I did that, I started networking more in Houston. And from there, that's how I kind of gravitated towards Atlanta. Um, just, uh, oh yeah, I also work with uh, Sarah J. Okay. She's, she's a producer um, manager. And I was able to, um, you know, display some beats and some of the uh, records I done worked on with some independent, dope independent artists. Mm -hmm. um, to kind of get placements and stuff, and that kind of got my foot in the door in that in that aspect. Uh, of course, working with Kelby and making a magazine, right? Um, networking with them, they they put me in position to meet some sync uh, licensing people, uh, getting a beat battle world. That was different for me, <laughs> right, right? And just network with a lot of their uh, people. You know what I mean? Okay. So it, it it was real nice. I met some really dope artists that way. Right, right. Absolutely. That's amazing to hear about. It seems like you have a lot of those moments, you know, and the the key word is that you've been kind of consistent throughout these 10 years. You know, you've been working, you've been networking. Like you said earlier, it's a constant grind. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And that's what I appreciate about it the most. Right. Right. OK, that's good to know. Um, so when it comes to, you know, actually physically being in the studio and working with people, mm -hmm. um, tell me about, you know, the difference between working with somebody in the studio versus like sending them a, a beat pack and working with them virtually over the phone. So I guess five years ago, uh, it was a headache sending people beats. I prefer to work in the studio with you. Because I, I like make I enjoy the process, you know what I mean, and I like my input. Uh, I like the artist's input, and I like to make it kind of connect that way. Uh, when I'm sending beats and stuff, it really never, it, it the connection is never really there. Mm -hmm. um, but 
uh, having access to like Zoom and stuff like that, it kind of helped the process a lot better. I would like book these Zoom oh, yeah. sessions with artists and there's a, there's a feature on Zoom where you can kind of display the sound and they'll hear it clearly. So mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it was pretty dope. This pandemic really kind of enhanced some of the, those virtual and, um, and not physical contact, you know? Right, so. right. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, the pandemic definitely played a role in changing the game and making it honestly more efficient for everybody. I feel like finally these corporate structures that we were kind of used to in the past adjusted to the times, you know, got with the new technology of the day and has made it simpler for people to connect, create and vibe to new music. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I that's what I appreciate about it the most, you know, because it put things in perspective from a music standpoint. Like independent artists really it, it, it gave them a chance. It gave them their shot. And if they didn't take advantage of that or learn from that, then I don't know what to say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I feel like, um, you know, the the pandemic was just kind of showed who the hustlers are out here, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. How did the pandemic play a role in, um, in the way that you work? I know we kind of touched on it a little bit, but if you could, you know, go into a little bit more detail about how did the pandemic affect you uh, kind of before and after? Yeah, so before uh, the pandemic, I was on a roll, like I, everybody, I was working on a lot of people. I was able to move around, go from this state to this city, this town and work with everybody. You know what I'm saying? So it really helped me um, expand as a art, as a producer, of course. But I also um, was able to take advantage of the pandemic in a way because when the, the artists are like, oh, well, you know, the pandemic, I can't come here, can't come there, and this and this, they got us on shutdown. I really took advantage of Zoom. And then when Zoom uh, became a big thing and everybody started using it and people started understanding it more, my sessions picked back up. And I was able to just network like crazy that way, using social media, using all kind of different features that I could to, you know, keep expanding right. as a producer. Right. Yeah, so. Okay. Well, that's good to know. I think um, you were one of the people who definitely took advantage of it um, yeah. and artists as well, you know, who, who were working with you. And speaking of artists, I kind of want to jump into the contest that you're a part of. Um, let's talk about, you know, you're producing a full EP for the winner of the Making It Mad contest. Um, so tell me a little bit about that and, you know, what's going to go into that. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've seen all the opportunities that Making the Mag was creating for everybody, especially including myself. You know, they helped me out with some dope opportunities. So I just, you know, figured who better to partner up with and, you know, do something for independent artists, you know, something, get, give them a shot. And what better way? Well, that's one of the things that they really need is beats, you know what I'm saying? Beats, videos. So I was trying to use my resources to kind of, you know, help them out in their career, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So um, in this competition, I've met some dope artists. I will say that I've, I've met some uh, consistent artists. You know, they uh, really are trying to trying to get it, you know, trying to figure it right. out. And, you know, I just want to do whatever I can, whether it's sharing knowledge, whether it's helping out with, with a beat, however I can, I want to okay. you know, help them out. Okay, you know? cool. Um in your opinion, what are you looking for uh, in the winner? You know, what is what kind of qualities does the winner need to have in order for you to be able to produce this EP for them? Yeah, so I would. What I'm looking for in the winner is, you know, consistency. Definitely having consistency. Uh, I know a lot of artists have a have a you know a burst, and then it just they just are content with that. I'm looking for consistency for sure. Um, willing to listen, willing to learn, because I'm always like that. And just be able to have good energy, especially when we're making the, in, in the creative process. You know what I mean? So that's very key. And, um, you know, taking a career serious. That's that's another big thing. You know what I mean? So right. um, understanding that helps 
the, the work go smoother. It helps the process go smoother. It just helps everything go great. So, right, yeah. right. People who take their own work seriously are definitely much easier people to work with. And it shows, you know, you can tell in work ethic um, and the content that they're putting out. Something that you mentioned was consistency. Uh, what does consistency look like? You know, does that look like releasing a song every day for the last year? Or <laughs> <laughs> is it, you know, a project every one or two months like what does that look like do you think well the music industry has transformed so much to where you really it's really like shoot your shot i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that i'm gonna do this until it works but just having like um just trying to build a team you know a, a team that works for you mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying um building a strategy around uh your marketing you know understanding marketing taking time to learn these things like actually posting content good content <laughs> i i, I want to iterate that because a lot of people think oh i'm gonna just post this post that post this post that no understanding you know what uh content is 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 a part of your career if you if that's what you want if you if this is your serious career that you're trying to achieve i mean just taking time to learn and, and really grow as an artist from an all-around standpoint uh, Kanye said it uh, said it best. Artists are business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They are business. So, yeah. and that's true. Absolutely, artists are businesses, and I think that's something that um, you know, uh, with uh, I can't speak today. <laughs> outside of the passion, outside of the love for the music, it does take having you know the street smarts, the um, the knowledge, and the resources really to be able to like push your music out and create content that your audience is going to like um, and that is going to promote your brand. So it really is a strategy. The goal at the end of the day is to make money. You know, that's what right. people, if you're pursuing this as a career, chances are you do want to be able to survive off of your passion or your craft. Um, so this contest is going to provide the winner with also a $10,000 marketing budget. Uh, to put behind a project. Talk to me about the importance of, you know, having a budget. And when you're independent, you have to come up with a lot of these these things on your own. So uh, talk to me, you know, about the importance of having a marketing budget. Yeah, so the importance of having a marketing budget. Think about it. Uh, the way I, I like to put it is, okay, if McDonald's didn't franchise the way they did <laughs> with Ray Kroc's strategy, they wouldn't be McDonald's today. Mm -hmm. They would be that same mom and pop uh, store that was just, I mean, a restaurant that was just thriving in that one aspect. Mm -hmm. But when you think about the branding aspect of it, it mixed with the marketing because um, me, marketing is probably the most important part of your music. Uh, I know uh, there was a big debate about it uh, in the past, but uh, marketing to me, that's that's your exposure. That's you introducing yourself to the world the right way. And if you don't put a budget behind it, if you, um, enough eyes is not going to see your music where you can't benefit from right. it. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's definitely key. Um, you know, I'm a publicist as well, so I definitely understand having a marketing budget to go alongside everything that you're promoting or else it's like, you know, you want to... The goal is to get outside of your network every single time. So if you're only posting on Instagram or, you know, Facebook, you're only sharing with your close friends and family who have known you for your whole life. So you got to be able to invest in YouTube, invest in ads, invest in outlets and blogs who are going to um, read some of this stuff. And Making It Magazine does a great job of that, for example. You know, they highlight different artists and talent. And that's a platform. You know, that's a, an extra right. link. That you have that's an extra search on google that you're going to appear when somebody types in your name so there's lots of benefits to just having a budget in general but using it the right way so um very exciting that this contest is is taking place yeah yeah i, I definitely appreciate making a man putting this together you know mark uh, and, and you can see it from, you know, the way they market. If you just mimic that, you know, enough, enough people know about you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you'll be a household name. So, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, is there anything else that um, we should be on the lookout for you while we're here? You know, anything that's coming up the rest of the uh, summer, the rest of the year? Yeah. So for me, um, I got a few projects coming out um, with some dope artists. I don't want to spoil it for them because I don't know if I got permission to say the records <laughs> yet, but uh, it's pretty dope. Pretty dope. Uh, look out for those uh, when they get here. If you don't um, follow me, if you need to follow me, all my social media handles are the same. Okay. Rob the Matrix. <laughs> so, Rob. Gotcha. yeah. So, yeah. And then um, on top of that, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm trying to put like a, um, a little like music one on one thing together to kind of educate independent artists on the music industry, how to read contracts, how to understand the terminology of contracts, um, how to understand how to set your and structure your music business so you can make money. So you can't, a lot of independent artists don't know these things. So um, trying to set up something to where I can help them out and do that. Yeah. So that's yeah. coming probably 2023 i'm getting all of, i've been working hard this year to get that going so right right okay okay yeah. lots of exciting things in the works i'm excited to uh keep up with you and your journey and i'm looking forward to this contest winner <laughs> yeah me too me too it's, a, it's some stiff competition out there but yeah. yeah we're gonna see we're gonna see how it unfolds we are gonna see how it unfolds okay well thank you so much rob the matrix it was a pleasure speaking with you and um we'll be in touch Definitely. Thank you. I uh, appreciate you. And thank you for having me. Okay. And thank you guys for watching. Have a good day. Peace.